Hello, everybody. Thanks for joining me here at the Doggington Post. I'm gonna give everyone a few minutes to, to join. Meanwhile, we will wait patiently. I hope uh, everyone's doing all right that's watching today. Uh, here in Chicago, we've had really bad weather. We had nonstop rain and lots of flooding. So um, Forrest, I was washing him yesterday and usually I'd blow dry him out and stuff and uh, wasn't able to do that because of all the flooding. So he's like, he looks homeless. So we're gonna be doing a real live actual brush out today uh, because he was not really prepped except for washed and air dried. So um, let me know if the sound is okay, if you can hear me all right. And also feel free to ask any questions uh, about uh, your own personal experiences. Uh, I really want everyone to learn how to uh, maintain their dogs at home in between grooming or if they're stuck at home right now and can't go to the groomer. Um, this is going to be a video to kind of show you how you can take care of your dog um, during that time. Um, so this is my dog Forrest, who's my baby. Hello from San Diego. And thank you Charlene. Sound is good. Okay. Let me give everyone a few more minutes. Um, for those of you that don't know my dog. This is Forrest Gump. Uh, he is a Cary Blue Terrier and if you don't know anything about this breed, they're a wonderful breed. I really wanted a dog that um, would guard my house for one and also a dog that would be really good with my child who is uh, almost 10 years old. So I wanted a family dog and I wanted a medium-sized dog that would also um, protect the house and he is he's a perfect dog he's just absolutely wonderful he's he's bored with me he's laying down uh so he is uh with his coat he doesn't shed so he needs regular haircuts and regular brushing so i uh end up brushing him out once a week at least uh just to keep him uh from getting any sort of tangles or anything uh, but yeah, if you don't know anything about these dogs, they're absolutely wonderful. So looks like it's time. Let's get started. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Valerie Partinsky, and I am an Andis educator in Chicago, Illinois. And what I wanted to show you today is how to maintain your dog. So whether you, uh, <laughs> sorry, I was reading the, the comments and lost my train of thought. So whether your dog can't get groomed uh, right now because of all that's going on or if you just need some help with how to maintain your dog in between grooms if you like your dog to be really fluffy they need regular brush outs in between either in between grooms or um weekly if you can so if your dog doesn't get groomed uh like every week then you're gonna have to do some maintenance at home if you want to keep them long and fluffy so um, i'm gonna start off on the floor i wanted to make it seem more like what a lot of people have at home most people don't have a ton of supplies or a grooming table so i'm gonna start it off on the floor and then i'm gonna move it up to the table only because it's gonna be really hard to see a lot of the stuff that i'm doing when i'm on the floor um he's like passed out right now okay so i'm gonna start off with the brush out and the setup that i have here is i just have I, I took a, a weight like anybody would have in their house. This is a 20 pound weight and he just has a regular collar and leash on. Come on, Forrest. Oh, hi. He just has a regular collar and leash on and I just have him attached to this. You don't have to use a weight. You could definitely use a chair or a table, anything just so that your dog knows that they're, they can't go anywhere right now. Like it, this is the time to hang out. And I always start with some sort of conditioning spray. So you could use a... Uh, anything really if you have if you're if you're going to use it that day you can just use water and a little bit of conditioner and just mix it up really really well uh today i've got the hydra ultra dematting spray i really like it it helps get the brush through a little bit smoother it is nice to use something even if all you have is just water just to let the the comb and the brush get through a little bit easier uh, so let's do it. I'm going to start with his face. Uh, for anyone that has dogs with beards or anything, uh, this is a really good way to really gently get out any tangles, uh, just from regular day-to-day -day stuff. 
out of forest. Okay, I'm gonna tilt this down. I did not expect him just to lay here like this. <laughs> Come here, dude. Okay, so first I'm gonna start by covering up his eyes and just very lightly spraying a little bit of the conditioning spray on. And then, come here. Come here. He's extremely spoiled. <laughs> so I'm just going to start at the front, just with, this is just a pin brush. You could use a slicker brush too, if that's what you have. And I'm just gonna start by really, really gently going through the front of his beard here. Now, for those of you that don't know this breed, these guys get all of this hair on their face because they were all-purpose dogs on the farm. So uh, they were one of the one of the main reasons that they have all of this hair in the front of their face is vermin. They were supposed to take care of all the barn vermin, so they didn't want it to be easy for them to see their eyes. So a little bit of history there. And I love the way that these dogs look. And like I said, he looks pretty squirrely today because uh, yesterday when I was trying to get him ready for this, uh, we had flooding and I was unable to continue to blow drying him. So I just let it go. So he's looking ragged right now. And I'm just really lightly, it, it might, I don't know how it looks at camera, but I'm just really lightly going through it, just like I would if I were brushing my own hair. If I had a really big knot or something, I would hold it at the very base of the hair. Let's see, let me switch hands here. I would hold it at the very base of the hair so that I'm not pulling and tugging on his skin. And then go through it with a slicker brush really, really gently working through it. Now, the most important part is checking with your comb. And make sure that that comb, and this is uh, Anda's comb, it's kind of wide teeth. It'll be great for starting out. And I'm just going from the root out to the tip. And if it gets caught, I am not yanking on it at all. I go back in with my brush and hold it firmly at the root and get out any little tangles that might be making the comb not go through. And as long as you do this regularly, it's not going to be uncomfortable for the dog. If you let it get really, really knotted up, that's when it's not gonna feel good for them. So just checking and make sure that I can get that comb through. There we go. And then same with the other side. I've had Forrest since he was a puppy, so I have worked with him on this. So he's very used to being groomed. Okay, so we've got that beard and face all combed out. There we go. Now I wanted to show you how I would do his body. And I'm gonna start again from the floor before we work our way up. Spray with the conditioning spray. And you can use a generous amount at this point. You don't want it dripping wet, but enough so that it's everywhere. And I'm gonna take off his collar at this point just so I can get around his neck. Now this is an area that does get knotted up really easily because of these collars. So you do want to pay special attention to here. And if your dog wears a harness normally, you're talking about getting friction here at the withers and all the way under here and at the chest. So you definitely want to pay special attention to those parts. He wears a collar, so I'm gonna pay special attention to this area here. And I'm just working my way in very small sections. So separate the hair and work my way down. You can also go from the back and work your way forward, just depending on your dog. He was turned this way, so that's what I did. <laughs> and this is just a regular uh, slicker brush. I love this brush. It's an Andis slicker brush. 
that it really does a great job while still being very, very gentle. So I did this section right here. Let's see if we can get this lighting a little bit better. There we go. Okay. Sorry about that. My camera keeps readjusting, but hopefully you can see okay. So now that I've done that section, I'm taking my comb and very gently going through this area. And if it were to get caught, I would take out my brush again. So now that I've done this neck area, this part on this dog is very, very short already. So he does not have to be brushed here. So I'm going to put his collar back on. And I'm going to start working my way back. Again, holding it firm and separating the hair. And where I'm working right now is from the back of his neck all the way down to his tail right now. I'm just doing this strip. I'm not going to go all willy nilly in all different directions on all different spots. And if you want your dog to have a nice fluffy haircut, this is the kind of stuff that has to be done. Just like if I went to my hairstylist with dreads and I showed him this picture of somebody with hair down here, beautiful, luxurious hair, he's going to say, I can't do that. So it's all about the maintenance. If you maintain your dog in between, your dog can probably have any haircut that you want. So now I've brushed out the strip. I'm going to check and make sure. Oh, I got a little bit of tugging right here. So I'm going to go over that spot again. Boris, you're such a good boy. He's like, I know. I know I am, Mom. And anywhere that it doesn't glide through easily, I go over again. Come here, buddy. You can't see your tail. There we go. Okay. So now that I've done this strip, now I'm going to work my way down the shoulder. And I try to use the same routine every single time I brush out a dog. Sometimes it might move around a little bit, but I do always do the same sections at a time. So for right now, I'm doing this whole shoulder area, brushing it through, and then checking with the comb. And we had a little bit of tugging right there. Now I did not brush him out yesterday. So this is a serious brush out after having a bath yesterday and then totally air drying. And I will check uh, comments periodically. So feel free to ask any questions and I will try to answer them as best I can. There we go. Still a little bit of tugging there. And I'm not using a lot of pressure when I'm putting the brush on him. I'm, it's very, very gentle pressure here. The brush will do the work for you. You don't want to really dig into your dog because that's not going to be comfortable for them. So going over it lightly is going to get knots out way more than using a ton of pressure on your dog. Now I've got the shoulder done and I'm going to work my way back. And if your dog has dried out on that a little bit, then feel free to give him another spray just to make that brush glide through a little bit easier. And holding onto the skin, again, we don't want a lot of movement. Here we are. Now here's a little bit of a tougher part. The armpit area is a friction point. So a lot of times dogs are gonna have a lot of knots in here. And it's also a very sensitive area. So I'm gonna show you what I do with him to make it comfortable. I am picking up his front leg right now and he's used to giving paws, so he's used to this. And very, very gently, I am going through this area and only doing a very small section at a time. And I can feel when it runs through smoothly. 
If it gets caught anywhere, go back and go over the area again. This is a slow, gentle process so that your dog enjoys it. You can see I had a little bit of tugging right there, so I'm just gonna give another spritz because just like any other dog, he does get knots in this area. And the tummy is gonna be very sensitive also. So now we can get through there. And now I'm gonna do this little strip on his belly here. I'm gonna put his leg down, good boy for us. And I'm gonna hold tight his skin up here and really, really gently I'm going through here. Now Forrest, you can't tell, but Forrest is a very sensitive dog. He is, uh, yeah, I don't know what, uh, what other word to use for him. He is very sensitive. If he was uncomfortable right now, he would tell me. Um, so you know that I'm being very, very gentle with this brush. And if I hear any sort of scraping noise, I know to go back and go over it again. Now I've done that strip in the middle. I'm going to check a little bit still. Almost, Forrest, good boy. And I'm holding his skin right now. Not holding his skin, but I am holding him on the side of his body so that I'm kind of keeping it this tight, if that makes sense. Just because he feels like laying his head on my arm. Let me check and see if there's any questions at this point. Okay. Hello, hello. Again, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Valerie Partinsky, and I'm an Andis educator. I'm currently brushing my dog out on the floor because I know that's what a lot of people have to, have to do in their homes when they don't have a grooming table. So here we are. Uh, would you use the same brush out method and tools on a double coated dog like a golden retriever? Yes, definitely. You could definitely uh, go through them with the comb and everything because all of that undercoat that comes out if the undercoat is still in there, your comb is not gonna glide through. So you'll know that all of that undercoat is out when your comb is able to glide through. So you can do the exact same thing. He is beautiful, thank you, Patsy. I sure think so. And the spray that I'm using is by Hydra and it's the uh, Ultra Dematting Spray. So I'm gonna uh, go ahead and do his back leg now. I'm gonna do his front leg once I get up on the table just because it's, uh, I know it's a little bit hard for everyone to see everything and crawling around on the floor. <laughs> so let's get this back leg done and then we'll do the front leg up on the table. So again, just giving them a, a nice little spray. Another area that's gonna be pretty sensitive is right in here. So you wanna be really gentle there too. Not that you should be not gentle anywhere, but I am extra gentle right here. And I am holding, he's got longer hair here, so I'm actually holding it at the base and starting at the ends and working my way up. And once it's able to kind of go through easily without a lot of friction or sound, then I start working my way back to the root. And it's not a short process if your dog's getting brushed. This is once a week that this dog gets like this. So you can think of how much harder it would be if he went an entire month without getting brushed out. Which is exactly why I do it once a week so that it's not uncomfortable for him. But you can tell that it's still work. This isn't super easy and quick. Again, holding at the root so that it's not uncomfortable and working my way up from the ends to the root. Now I'm just gonna check. Again, I'm holding the root just so that if I do hit a snag, I'm not tugging on him, especially in this very, very sensitive area. 
the other things that I'm going to go over today are how to shave pads, how to trim the sanitary area, and also how to maintain nails, cutting and filing, and how to clean ears. So if we ever get through this brush out, which we will, we'll get to that stuff too. The tools that I'm using today for the brush out is I used, I used the pin brush on his face. I've got just a regular old Andis slicker brush, which is a very, very nice slicker brush. And then I've got an Andis comb and its teeth are, you can see they're pretty wide, but that's just to check, which is one of the most important parts of brushing out your dog. You might think that your dog is totally brushed out, but when you get that comb in there, if it's getting stuck, your dog is not brushed out. So it might feel like you can glide a brush over anything, and think that it's doing something. But if it is not getting down to the skin and you can't get a comb through it, then it's not working. So I think that the combing is the most important part of brushing. Okay, we've got a leg brushed out. Now I'm going to put him up on the table so that you can see a little bit better. I still have to do his foot, but I think, uh, I think we will get a better view if we get him up there. So I'm going to move him up. It's just going to take me one second. Hold tight. Again. Let's get Forrest up here. Come here, buddy. Now, <laughs> he's a groaner. Here we go. So now that we've got him up here, let me just adjust so you can see. There we go. Okay. So the proper way to pick up your dog, if you are going to put them on a table and a grooming table, if you're just doing ma regular maintenance at home is actually so nice to have because it is hard to sit on the floor and groom your dog. So if you're doing regular maintenance at home, it's really nice to have one of these. Uh, this is just a regular folding tape, uh, folding grooming table. It doesn't have to be fancy, but just something to get them elevated so that you could be more comfortable. And the proper way to pick up your dog would be underneath here and underneath here. And that's gonna be the most comfortable way to pick him up. So the only spot that I had left was the front leg and the back foot. So I'm just gonna finish that. I'm only gonna do half of him because whatever I did on the one side, you wanna do on the other. Again, feel free to leave any questions in the comments. I will be checking them. This is, this technique is going to be great for pretty much any dog, unless it's just a completely short haired dog. Uh, that's going to be a little bit different because you need to de-shed rather than uh, brushing out any knots. They're not going to get any knots, but this would be great for uh, any dog that needs a haircut really. And like somebody mentioned earlier, uh, they have a golden and even though that is a dog that sheds, this technique would work perfectly for that dog also. And you can see I'm always, when I'm combing, I'm always holding at the root. Okay, so, oh wait, we're turning the wrong way. <laughs> Forrest, we did the wrong side, let me turn him. <laughs> Work your way up 
because then you're not grabbing a whole bunch of hair at one time. So just do it layer by layer. Start at the toenails and start working your way up. And then once you get a decent section done, check with your comb. My comb is going through from root to ends so that I can work my way up. Not using a lot of pressure, just lightly dragging that brush through. And if it gets caught anywhere, I go back and start at the spot again. So now I've done a section. Work our way up. Now if I weren't talking the entire time, it would probably take me about 20 minutes to do this. Sometimes a little longer depending on what he's been up to. He, uh, he's a disgusting dog, to be honest. He really loves to play in the mud, and he gets really, really dirty, even after a few days. So he does need this very often. And make sure to do all four sides of the leg. Let's check, and there we are. Now, if you were going to get a table for your dog, you will also need an arm and a grooming loop because most dogs are not just gonna stand on the table without a little bit of guidance. And that grooming loop, it's very loose. I could get my whole hand through it, but it is letting Forrest know that he is attached to something and that he cannot jump off. Never ever use a choker of any sort when your dog is on the table because you never want them to get choked while they're up here. So always just a regular grooming loop or um, you could use a, a slip lead but doubles, uh, double loop it so that it does not tighten with pressure. Basically just anything to show your dog that they are up here and you do not want to jump off. Okay. So now we've got this leg brushed out. Now remember, I brushed out the other half of him and this front leg and this foot. So <laughs> don't judge this body because I haven't done that. For those of you uh, joining us right now, again, my name is Valerie Partitsky and I'm an Andis educator in Chicago. Thank you so much for showing up to Doggington Post for this. Uh, I have already at this point I showed everyone first while on the floor how to brush out his uh, face and he's got a beard and what's called a fall. So I showed how to get through any tangles in the face at all. And then we brushed out the whole um, strip from the neck back and then his whole side of his body and then front leg and back leg. So he is now all brushed out and I'm going to show you how to uh, shake pads. These clippers are really great. They are an Anna's clipper. They're the uh, five in one, the uh, Pulse, they're called the Pulse LI5. And what's really nice about these is that they could go from several different settings. So it starts at a nine, which is your longest setting on here, which is still a very, very short blade. So keep that in mind. You wouldn't wanna just, if you wanted to do like a fluffy haircut on your dog, you wouldn't wanna use a nine. That'd be very, very short. But nine is longest for stuff like pads and sanitary and stuff like that. So I'm gonna start with it on a 30. Now, Forrest is used to getting his feet shaved constantly. So if your dog is not used to it, or if it's been a while, you might wanna start with a nine or 10, just to get off just a little bit of it at a time rather than getting off a whole bunch at one time. I'm gonna move you all so that you can see a little bit better. And I'm gonna start with his back foot. I've got this on the 30 setting. And what we're trying to do is get out any excess hair in the pads. What happens if there's a lot of hair here, you're gonna get matting, you're gonna get a lot of dampness that'll stay in there. So you want to get all of this hair out 
so that it doesn't get full of grime. It can cause little infections in their feet if it uh, if a lot of hair continues to grow and it gets matted and it gets a lot of moisture in there. So you do wanna keep up with this. So what I'm gonna do is shave in this V area here first. You're such a good dog, Forrest. And then I'm just going to get any excess hair off of the sides of the pads here. Now I've got this on the 30 blade, but again, you can always use a nine or a 10, which is a little bit longer. And I'm very, very lightly gliding over. He's a little ticklish. And gently scooping out. Just in that V area right now. Don't worry about anything else yet. You can also take your brush and try to pull out any excess hair that's in there. And don't worry about it being perfect. You just want to get the excess out. You just don't want a whole bunch of hair in there. And then I'm just going to get all of this extra hair around these pads here. Just a little bit. Laying it on there, on the pad, laying it on the pad, and then just gliding over that hair. Same thing here, laying it on the pad and letting that outer edge get that excess hair. And then I like to do the outer edges of the pads also. Whoa. Again, very ticklish. He's a good dog. One thing that I would like to point out is where you hold your foot. You don't want to make him hold his leg up in an uncomfortable position. So I am bringing it up and he's very relaxed up to a point where he is still relaxed. You never want to pull it out into a position where your dog is struggling or it's really uncomfortable for them. So be really careful of that. We want to make this a, a good process for your dog. So we've done that pad now. Again, it's not perfect, but we got the excess hair out, which is what's most important here. Could I go in with a shorter blade and get it completely clean? Absolutely. Um, but for those of you just learning, this will be perfectly fine for keeping it from getting matted or staying really wet in there. So I'm gonna do the front one. And I'm sorry, I have to keep moving you around a whole lot. There we go. Okay. I'm gonna do it a little bit awkwardly from across him, just so you can see. Again, on the 30 blade, picking out that V here. And coming into that V area really gently, and then scooping out. And then running over in between those, those bottom two pads, and then coming off the side of the other one. And let's see what it looks like. Just have a little excess here. I'm gonna scoop out. And there we go, much better. You see, now you can see, I see those uh, posts on Facebook that are so cute where they do the little teddy bear face on the pads. I love it when you can see their pads and they look all neat and pretty. Next thing is going to be the sanitary area. And I'm going to talk about how you would do it to a male and also to a female. Obviously I can't show you on him how to do a female's sanitary area because he is a boy, but I am going to show you demonstrate how you would. To do the sanitary area, I'm gonna use a 10 blade. Again, if your dog is not used to getting this area trimmed very often, you might wanna try a nine because that is longer. And I'm just gonna lift up this hair out of the way. And from his penis, moving forward, I'm not gonna go in the direction of it. I'm going to just take off this hair right here, right in front of it. That's just going to keep it from getting damp, getting any pee on it. 
and I was just very, very gently gliding over that area. Then I'm going to lift up his leg again, making sure that it's in a comfortable position for him. And I'm going to go in this direction so that there's no way that I can catch the tip of his penis with my blade. So going from the center out. And I can go this way, side to side, or from the back forward, but you never want to go from the belly button towards the penis. I'm going to be very, very careful. We got that all cleaned up. Now he does have, let me move you again. He does have testicles, so I would, I'm going to clean up that area just in the same way that I would if he were a female. So you can always, with the female, with a vulva here, you can go from the sides to side and back, but you would never go this direction because you could cut your dog. You want to be very careful there. And now we've got that area all clean. Now we're gonna trim up the rectum area. You do wanna keep that nice and clean so that no poop gets stuck to the butt ever. So I'm using a very, very light touch here and just really gently gliding over that area to get any excess hair off. This is with the 10 blade. You can also use a nine. And just cleaning up anything around there. And we, with me regularly maintaining that area, we never get poop stuck to the butt ever. So fun fact, if that area is kept nice and short constantly, then you're not gonna get sticky stuff. So now we've done that sanitary area. Please let me know if you have any questions and I will try to answer them. Now you're going to trim nails. He has black nails, which a lot of people's dogs do. So it does make it a little bit difficult to see, but every dog's nail has a dot in the center. And on forests, you can see, let's try and get you a little bit closer here. Okay. You can see the outer part of the snail, and then there is a black dot in the center. That is the vein. That is his quick there, which means that his nails cannot go really, really short. I cannot cut off a whole bunch off of his nails or they are gonna bleed. So I'm gonna show you what I would do with his. There we are. When they are up to the quick already, and we're also gonna file these. To cut his nails, because we're already at the quick, I'm only gonna take off the very front, just a teeny tiny bit. If your dog's nails were really long and you couldn't see the quick, you could take off a little tiny bit at a time until you saw that little dot in the center. But since his is already there, I can't cut it. So I'm just cutting off the very tip of his nail. I'm laying it in the spot that I want and then really quickly cutting it. And let's do the other one. Okay. And same thing, I'm just taking off the tips here. These nails are also right at the quick, which is good because they're regularly maintained. They're not overgrown by any means. And now I'm gonna show you how to file them. 
With dogs with long hair, it's really important that you move all of their hair out of the way so that it can't get caught in your grinder. Also, never use a corded grinder on your dog. If you ever got caught on the hair, it won't stop. So it is very, very important that you use a, a cordless grinder on your dog's nails. What I have here is the Andis nail grinder. It's got several speeds on it. I'm going to use it on the low speed. Again, because he has long hair. And I'm gonna move his hair out of the way. And since his nail is already at the quick, I am just gonna smooth it all out on the sides and on the front. I'm not gonna take any extra length off because he doesn't need it right now. So I've got it on low and I'm just really lightly putting it on there and getting it off to the front and off to the sides. I like to cut the nails before I file them so that I don't have to have, I don't have to spend a lot of time trying to get all of that extra length off. Again, I'm moving this hair out of the way as I go and then just smoothing off the sides. I'm not putting the Dremel at all on the center of the nail because it's already short enough. If I did, it would bleed. Okay. And now I've smoothed, smoothed them out and they are right up to the quick, that black dot in the center. That means that he can, they cannot go any shorter Okay, I'm gonna do this front one for you again. It's a little hard to get this view, so bear with me. I'm trying my best. Okay, moving the hair out of the way. And uh, if it's regular maintenance, it does not take a long time at all. Pushing this nail so it's in the spot that I want it. And then just smoothing out the edges. Pushing out the second one. And don't ever hold it down on one spot because it will feel hot on that nail area. You don't want that. You want it to be nice and comfortable. Okay. All right, now we've filed those nails so they're nice and smooth. If he were to jump up on you, he is not gonna scratch you because his nails are nice and smooth. Okay. Okay, let us see. All right, for everyone that's concerned about my boy, uh, Forrest is a carry blue terrier. So uh, again, we earlier I did talk about the purpose of the hair around his face. Uh, we are basically preserving history with this breed. So they were used on the farms for all different kinds of jobs. They were an all-purpose dog. And one of those jobs was uh, vermin in the barn and stuff. So we, uh, they are supposed to have hair in the front here so that those vermin could not see their eyes easily. Forrest can see and he's very used to this, and he is one of the happiest dogs that you will ever meet in your entire life. So for all those concerned, I promise Forrest has a wonderful life. The next thing I'm gonna show you is how to clean his ears. What I'm gonna use is just a cotton ball. I actually split these in half because they're very, very big and I put a little bit of ear cleaner on them. You can use whatever you have. And then I'm just gonna go in. And very gently on the outer canal. And then again in. I'm just gonna go in and make sure that nothing yucky comes off 
So this was a purple ear cleaner. So it's clean, there's nothing on it, which is good. If you had a lot of stuff coming off, you might wanna do a second run. I'm gonna do the other one. And if you're doing the regular maintenance, it shouldn't be a whole lot. And if they do have black gooey stuff, or if it smells bad, then it might be a vet visit. So just cleaning off that outer canal there and then really gently putting it in there also. Checking to make sure there's no stuff on it, which there isn't. And we've got some nice clean ears. I am going to check again for any questions or comments. Yes, those clippers are the LI5, the, the Pulse LI5, and it's an adjustable blade. It only has one speed, and the blade goes from nine to 10 to 15, 30, and 40. So the longest, the highest number, which is your 40, is going to be the shortest length. You can see as I move it that the blade goes down, which is gonna leave it longer. So I used the 30 setting on his pads and then I used the 10 on his sanitary area. And then the other tool that I used today was the Andis nail grinder, which is a, a really, really great grinder. I'm actually getting another one so that I can have one at the shop and at home for my own dogs because I use it so often and I don't wanna bring it back and forth, but it is really amazing. You turn it on, that's the power button there. This is the lowest setting, so it's nice and quiet. So for any dogs that don't like a lot of noise, you could bring it down to that and it could go really high, especially if you have A, dogs that are really used to it or dogs that um, have really, really thick nails and you need a little bit more power to get through them. So there's that. It looks like we don't have any more questions. So I'm gonna say again, come here, say, say goodbye to everyone. Um, I'm going to sign off now. Thank you everybody for joining me here at Dogging Tim Post. Again, I'm Valerie Partiski. I am an Andis educator in Chicago, Illinois on Instagram. My handle is at Chicago Groomer, and on Facebook, I am uh, Valerie Partinsky at Chicago Groomer. Thank you so much for joining us. I hope that you learned something and you enjoyed it. Thank you so much.